Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Cleveland Browns draft class based on analytics. And in this particular video, we're going to look at the Cleveland Browns draft class based on a combination of production data and athleticism data uh, relating to the NFL draft and past uh, what, what past draft classes look like based on the data. If you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, and ultimately, this is going to cover a lot of different data points and stuff like that. But if you go to the description, you'll learn a lot more. If you go to some of my previous videos as well, um, you'll learn a lot more. But bottom line is we're going to go through all the picks that the Cleveland Browns selected and what their chances are in terms of long-term success based on analytics. So starting with the first pick, we of course have Baker Mayfield, quarterback out of Oklahoma. Uh, Mayfield is by far uh, one of the best testing quarterbacks in this draft class based on data. Uh, had a 92.41 high school production score, 94.22 FBS production score, and pretty much hits all the Pro Bowl potential marks you're looking for in terms of both of those particular metrics. On top of that, when you look at his career data, had a 93.53 career production score which hits the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, and starter threshold. And on top of that, when, we, when you look at the average scores of all-pro players, pro bowl players, and starter players since the 1958 NFL draft class, he's well above all those averages. So Mayfield is just incredible in terms of his overall production data and ultimately has the best chance to become a successful quarterback in this draft class. He may not end up becoming the highest upside quarterback. There definitely is a guy like Sam Darnold who could end up becoming uh, better than him, but he is easily the safest pick just from the perspective of a guy that's very consistent in terms of his overall data and looks the best on paper out of every quarterback in this draft class. Uh, and then of course you get to the next pick in Denzel Ward, a uh, cornerback at Ohio State. Uh, his production data is decent, not amazing in terms of solo tackle data, but does hit at least above the Pro Bowl potential uh, bottom end threshold in terms of that. It has very good pass deflection data, 88.24 out of 100 which pretty much hits above the average pass deflection score for all pro player and pro bowl uh, uh, players in terms of uh, cornerbacks since 1989. And when you look at his athleticism traits, 83.72 in terms of explosive lower body strength score, 89.25 in terms of his speed score, 95.30 in terms of his flexibility testing, pretty much has all the traits of a multiple all pro cornerback with the exception of length. 100% uh, of multiple all pro cornerbacks since the 1999 NFL draft class had at least 32 inch arm length. And unfortunately, Denzel Ward doesn't quite have that. So with Ward, you're looking at a guy that has the potential to be a very, very good Pro Bowl level cornerback, but his size and length does cap his upside in terms of what he could ultimately become at the next level. But overall, pretty solid pick. Probably a little high for a guy like this who has some question marks in terms of his production, but definitely pretty good overall chance to be a successful player at the next level. Uh, then of course you get to Austin uh, Corbett, uh, offensive guard slash center out of Nevada. Uh, when you get to his uh, athleticism testing at a 69.09 explosive lower body strength score, 75.76 speed score, and a 71.43 uh, flexibility score. Uh, doesn't quite look like a all pro level offensive lineman in terms of uh, his overall data, but does look like a Pro Bowl offensive lineman, does have above average athleticism across the board. And when you look at the averages of the position, he looks kind of like a Pro Bowler to starter based on his overall athleticism testing. So very, very solid all around profile uh, when you look at him, athletically speaking. Uh, then of course you get to Nick Chubb, uh, running back out of Georgia. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, he had a 73.49. Uh, out of 100 market share production score, which doesn't quite hit the all pro threshold of 89 or higher, but does hit the five time Pro Bowl threshold of 69 or higher, and definitely hits the three time Pro Bowl threshold of 52. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, uh, is pretty dang close to the average Pro Bowl score and average starter score, but doesn't quite have that all pro potential. So, this is a guy that very good, very good chance to become a long term starter and Pro Bowl player, but not exactly an all pro player. And when you look at his athleticism testing, 97.81 in terms of his explosive lower body strength score, 86.08 in terms of his speed score, and 82.63 in terms of his flexibility testing. Pretty much has all pro to pro bowl potential in terms of athleticism testing. And overall, Nick Chubb is a is one of the running backs in this draft class that has pro bowl potential. So he's a guy that could either become a long-term starter to a pro bowl player based on his overall profile. Then we get to Chad Thomas, edge out of the University of Miami. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, 32.84 out of 100 in terms of solo tackle data, 33.45 in terms of sack data, 
five uh, in terms of uh, TFL data. Uh, not good. Does not hit the All Pro threshold. Does not hit the Pro Bowl threshold. It doesn't even come close to the averages in terms of All Pro potential and Pro Bowl potential in terms of production. And not just that is the issue. It's also athleticism testing. Uh, 53.81 in terms of his explosive lower body strength score. 50.31 in terms of his speed score. And 30.40 in terms of his flexibility testing. His flexibility testing was downright dreadful. Um, especially when you look at it on paper in terms of what he did at his pro day, which is usually friendly when it comes to that. Uh, so overall, not a guy that looks like a all-pro player, pro bowl player. Uh, could become a long-term starter. That's always a possibility. Uh, you know, th that's always kind of out there in the whims, but just doesn't quite look like he would have to be an outlier if he becomes anything more than what he was in terms of his production data and his athleticism testing. Uh, and then, of course, we get to Antonio Callaway, wide receiver out of Florida. Uh, when you get to his uh, passing yardage mark share production, he had a 68 out of 100, which pretty much hits the three-time Pro Bowl level uh, since the 1969 NFL draft class. Uh, and again, this is kind of rounding uh, up or down, you know, when it comes to these particular numbers. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, doesn't quite look that well when you get to this. So again, the All-Pro average is about 92.14. Pro Bowl is about 88.38. And even starters, 81.45 in terms of the averages at the position. So Antonio Callaway, in terms of his overall production, just doesn't look that amazing. A lot of this is because he missed the majority of last year because of many, many reasons. But a lot of times those reasons are why he doesn't get into that Pro Bowl or All-Pro level. Like he, this is kind of where character kind of does impact uh you know a guy's ability to prove he can become an all pro to pro bowl player because you can't become an all pro player or even a multiple pro bowl player if you're missing games because you're being suspended um, but overall again production wise is just a little iffy his athleticism testing is not in doubt though um, 59.63 in terms of his explosive lower body strength scores 90.71 in terms of speed and 66.38 in terms of flexibility testing so definitely has all pro to pro bowl potential based on his athleticism testing but again, when it comes to wide receivers, production is the one thing that kind of wins out more so than athleticism. There have been many wide receivers who were incredible athletes, 90 plus percentile level athletes who were not productive and didn't become anything at the NFL level. But there are definitely plenty of wide receivers who were not that athletic who went on to become very good NFL wide receivers who were very productive in college. And that unfortunately is the issue of Callaway. He looks more like a really athletic guy who just didn't put it all together at the college level, and that probably won't be the case at the NFL level because of uh, the overall issues with him. Uh, and then, of course, you get to Jannard Avery, linebacker out of Memphis. When you get to his production date, he had a 34.75 solo tackle production score, which doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold in terms of his solo tackle data, but does hit at least the starter threshold. But as you can see, when it comes to the averages at the position, it doesn't come anywhere close to the average All-Pro, Pro Bowl, or even starter score when it comes to solo tackle data. Uh, but his athleticism testing is why you're drafting him. Had a 96.41 explosive lower body strength score, 95.55 speed score, 95.64 flexibility score. This is why you're drafting a guy like this. Freak all-around athlete, but just doesn't quite have the production to kind of justify uh, being a you know high-end draft pick. But is a guy that could end up becoming a successful player. There have been about two linebackers who scored as poorly as him in terms of production data that went on to become successful players. One of those was Thomas Howard. The other one was DeAndre Levy since the um, 1989 NFL draft class. So there is a chance that Avery could become that kind of outlier. Uh, but that's, that's the only issue with Avery is that he would have to become an outlier to kind of hit those upside peaks. Uh, then, of course, you get to Damian Ratley, wide receiver out of Texas A&M. And he gets his production data at a 43.45 passing yards market share production score, which doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or even long-term starter area in terms of his overall data. And on top of that, when you look at the averages, is really below average in terms of All-Pro potential, Pro Bowl potential, and starter potential. And of course, when you get to his athleticism testing, 62.06 in terms of explosive lower body strength score, 79.20 in terms of speed, and 62.992 in terms of flexibility testing does have all pro to pro bowl potential athleticism traits but just doesn't have the production to match that guys that look like this doro green beckham jr uh yeah you know the list goes on in terms of guys like this justin hunter etc so um ratley is just a guy that has great athleticism athleticism traits but does not have the production to make it translate at the next level 
You know, he's a guy that was really athletic that didn't do much with that athleticism, which doesn't really work out that much long term. And then, of course, lastly, we get to Simeon Thomas, uh, defensive back out of Louis, uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, when you get to his production data, I mainly have his production data as a cornerback. Um, 50.67 in terms of solo tackle data and 98.86 in terms of pass deflection data. Very good in terms of his pass deflection data, of course, but the, the, the solo tackle data is the only sort of issue. He is kind of listed as a safety with them. He did play safety last year. I didn't do any athleticism testing. And it's just one of those guys that because of the lack of athleticism, it's really hard to project this guy overall. So even though I am giving you cornerback data, even if I gave you safety data, he still would be pretty hard to kind of judge what exactly he is uh, because of, uh, you know, the lack of athleticism testing. So honestly, I'm just going to kind of leave him blank in terms of uh, projection. Uh, I don't really think there's enough information to really say either way about him. Uh, but he is somebody as a cornerback who looked pretty decent. Um, overall, in terms of the Cleveland Browns draft class, I really like this draft class in terms of the, the top picks. For the most part, I think Baker Mayfield has a potential to be a franchise quarterback. I think Denzel Ward has a potential to be a long-term starting quarterback or better because of his athleticism testing and his age. I think Austin Corbett um, has a potential to be a long-term starting guard to interior offense alignment. I think Nick Chubb has a potential to be a Pro Bowl to long-term starting running back. And I think after you get that point, you definitely have a lot of different lottery tickets in many ways. You know, a guy like Chad Thomas, uh, Antonio Callaway, Avery, Ratley, and even Thomas have a lot of question marks with them uh, to kind of say what they could be next level. Most likely, when you take players that have question marks, they don't work out. But most draft classes, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say either way about this, but the bottom line is I do like this draft class. I do think that there's four very high-impact players that were taken in this draft. And I think that that's what kind of helps this draft class out. So even though there are some negative things to focus on in terms of the later rounds, I do think that the top four picks will kind of make up for some of those kind of swings and misses. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.